This film was proudly brought to you by Tiger Hill Permaculture, Sustainability, Education, Community. Visit us at www.tigerhillpermaculture.net. G'day, I'm Paul. This is Tiger Hill Permaculture. We're here today to address a problem with uh, our fruit trees on the property. At the moment, we're leading into spring and our fruit trees are starting to blossom up and get ready. Here we have a, uh, a peach tree. One of the problems we have on this farm is an overabundance of possums. And to address the overabundance of possums and the fact that they hammer our fruit trees is to come up with a creative solution to design the possums out of the system. We could put netting around the trees, we could put floppy fences, we could put floppy fence boundary all around this housing envelope zone one, zone two. But in the footsteps of uh, Zepp Holzer, we're going to today is make a short film on creating bone sauce. Bone sauce is a process of cooking down bones in a cast iron pot and then spreading the end sauce onto a tree and it's expected to deter wildlife from eating the trees. Um, Zepp Holzer uh, claims that this will be 10 to 15 year solution um, and even after 10 years if you wipe the bark of the tree, it still has a putrid smell. And I'm hoping this is a one, a cheap solution to my problem, because uh, the cost of fencing and labor and energy uh, soon outweighs some of these issues. So we're going to have a, have a go at doing it today. We have our material set up. Please enjoy and offer feedback where you can. Rightio, we're back again. We've got all our bits and pieces set up here, endeavouring to be efficient with what we're doing. We watched the DVD or the video on uh, YouTube on how to do this, so by no means do we consider ourselves to be professionals. We're going to have a crack at doing it and try and solve the problem of the fruit trees and possums. So we've got our two cast iron camp ovens. Uh, did a super deal with the guy at the uh, sporting goods store. Found one with a broken leg, got a huge discount, that was fantastic. We got some snake wire here, we've just bent it into shape. What the process is, is to fill up one of the cast iron pots with bones. Now, in the YouTube clip, we saw there was a mixture of bones. We might have this right or wrong. But what we've done, we've gone to the butcher and got some beef backbones. They're bones, they've got meat on them. We're going to try and see how it turns out. Looking on the uh, side of safety, we're going to be lighting a fire here. We've chose this spot because we're protected from the northern wind today. And uh, we're on the edge of spring. It's not exactly fire season yet, but we want to reduce the, the ability of any fire catching on elsewhere. We've got our water back up here behind us. Should things go pear-shaped, we've got a hose over there as well. Uh, we've got some gloves, should we need to uh, be touching anything sharp, maintaining workplace health and safety as well. We've got our water. It's uh, reported to use one eighth of a litre of water. So maybe that's about 125 millilitres of water. We've got that on hand. We've got some newspaper and some fire lighters to help us start the fire. We've got our bones. We've also got some clay here. Now you might be looking at this. It's not the best clay, but it's the best we've got on site. It's fairly alluvial sandstone mixed with clay, but all we're trying to do is once we put the pots together, is seal it to create a, uh, like a slow cooker, sealed cooking unit. Okay, so 
First thing is we're going to add roughly our 125 millilitres of water into the bottom pot. I think that's enough, roughly. We pre-dug a hole here yesterday to get the camp oven to sit into the hole relatively flushly. Just have a bit of a, a play around with that and get it sitting relatively level. We could put a bit of dirt down into the sides and get that to, uh, to fill in around the edge. That's not looking too bad. Okay, so the next thing to do is to put our bones into the pot. Okay, so we've got the, the beef bones in there, beef back bones. The YouTube clip doesn't say an amount of bones, it just says some bones. Is that dried bones? Is it bones with marrow? Is it chicken bones, lamb bones? I think the end result is to create a sauce that is the smell of death to another animal. The possums being herbivores and they're not eating themselves, maybe they don't like the smell of themselves. Maybe it doesn't work on possums. We're going to try it anyway. Okay, so we've got our pot here and we've got our little bit of uh, snake wire prefabbed to uh, sit over the, the top of this camp oven. I think it's important when you're going to do these things is to have all the resources on hand so you can do it relatively easy. Work out the steps of what we're doing. Earlier in the house we drew up a storyboard of how how we were going to make this happen. And then we gathered the resources to try and try and problem solve out all of the issues of trying to create the steps. Okay, so here we go. We've got the pot full of the bones. And now we're going to turn it up. We've got a tab here. We're gonna marry up with a tab on this oven here. So we can tentatively, if I flip it that way, it's gonna sit nicely. So here we go. Okay, that's fairly nice and tidy around there. Just want to tuck in all the wire because we're going to put clay around this to help seal help seal the ground. Don't really want the wire to be interfering with with the clay at all. Okay, so from, from that point, it's suggested to take clay and pack it round the joins of the pot. Now we've got, it, we've got surplus amount of clay here. We're gonna stack it round. We may even do a couple layers. careful when you are packing the clay that you don't disturb the seal between the pot. Now I'm finding with this, as I'm putting it straight onto the ground, that some of the loose dirt Underneath the clay is uh, is coming away with the clay as well, but we just force it in there.
double it up on this little bit here, which is a bit thin. I'm just going to try and poke it in a little bit. Try to get that seal right into the edge of the pot. Okay. That looks like it's, it did on the YouTube clip. Okay. What we're going to do now is stack up a fire around the, uh, the oven. Got a little bit of trusty newspaper here and some fire lighters. junk mail they say the fire should burn for between one and two hours so we've got a reasonable amount of wood here to try and do that again it's all research A couple uh, fire saviors in there as well. suggested in the uh, in the video stack it up like a like a TP so we'll do a bit of that I have my trusty assistant Anders here from Denmark. Anders has come from uh, the Work Away program and he's uh, been studying literature in Copenhagen and he has a keen interest in learning about sustainability. So he's here helping and learning from uh, the programs we have happening on the farm at the moment. Okay, so we're stacking the, uh, the kindling around the fire in a TP shape. So as the fire is coming up from the bottom, it's rising and dragging the heat up the, up the kindling. Now all this is nice seasoned hardwood as well. In the YouTube clip, they may have been in America, it may have been uh, softwood which burnt quite quick but we're just going to use this this is what we have on hand
We just got to hope that it's going to light first time. Okay, so we'll just clear our things out the way here. And uh, fingers crossed, good luck. Okay, so we started. We're going to let this burn for one to two hours. We're going to keep a very close eye on it. We've got our water in backup. Once the, uh, once the timber's burned down, we're going to then take away all of the embers. And we've got some soil here, and it recommends to stack up around the pot with soil to further create like an oven similar to a, uh, a hungy or an in-pit in oven. So we're going to do that. We're following the steps as close as we can from what we understand of the, the, uh, the video clip. And uh, again, fingers crossed. So we're just under an hour burning at the moment. Um, I've just added a little bit of extra timber um, because it says one to two hours. I'm gonna maybe make it an hour and a half, um, but it's quite warm. The wind's kept under control and hasn't blown it out of control. Um, so we'll just keep monitoring it. But uh, I think that our clay seal is um, doing not too bad because there's no smell of, uh, of burnt meat or anything at the moment, which, and there's no steam coming out of it. Um, it's suggested in the in Zepp Holtz's uh, YouTube clip that uh, to be very careful when it's burning because they can explode. So we're going to um, be mindful of that when we take the timber away and the embers away. I've got to get out of shot. Back again. We're exactly an hour and a half into uh, burning down. The embers are all still there, and now the pot is being exposed, and uh, I guess it's, it's remained hot all the way through. So what we've got to do now is take away the embers and cover the pot with soil. I've got some soil here that I've pre-loosened, and uh, we're going to stack around it and then create that uh, type of hungy type oven over the pot. Um, there's a little bit of a smell of, um, of cooked meat at the moment, so maybe uh, there's some uh, gases escaping there. So we're going to drag this out the way, and at the same time not disturb the, um, the clay. Wow, and that's uh, that pot has some severe heat coming off it. Just break this out of the way. Okay, so while it's hot, I'm just gonna start piling dirt on and let it volcano down.
Now it doesn't say how much dirt, it just says to cover it. But I'm thinking if I uh, maintain a relative uh, similar consistency thickness around it, then it's going to be okay. The idea of creating this hungy type uh, type enclosure is uh, it's maintaining all that heat in the pot and radiating it back in. So uh, just a little bit more. Now as uh, the fact that heat rises, I'm going to use the initial sod that we took out of the hole and put that on the top as a uh, as a little bit of a thermal mass I guess you could call it and um, and plug that heat coming out of there a little bit more let it trickle down Be mindful with all these uh, coals that we just drag them out of the way and uh, we'll just douse them with some water and uh, stop them from catching light any further during the day. We've got all these coals here as well, but we're going to recycle them in the future as well. We can uh, grind those down and put them into the garden, and the surface area of the charcoal is going to help retain water in there, so they're quite valuable to us, but we just need to, uh, to smother them and we can deal with them later. Okay, so a bit of a pat down without putting too much weight on it and uh, shifting the pot at all. There's been no steam or any real smell of uh, anything being cooked in there, so maybe the clay is working. Again, it's going to be all tentative until we open it up tomorrow. So now we're going to leave this for uh, 24 hours. We'll just douse the coals, put them out. We're going to go and have some lunch, do some other work around the farm, and come back to this tomorrow, 24 hours time. Righto, here we are, we're back again. It's about 24 hours since we covered up the bone source um, pots. Um, so it's, uh, it is all very cool. The anticipation's quite high on seeing what the result's gonna be like. So we're gonna go ahead and unearth it. But just to recap from yesterday, we had two cast iron pots. We buried one pot in the ground up to its lip. We put 125 mils of water in. We then filled up the second pot with bones. We put a wire mesh across it. We then flipped it upside down and joined it with the other pot in the ground. We then got some clay, packed it around the edge and uh, to seal the, the seal between the two pots. And then we lit a fire on top of it 
and we let that burn down, adding a little bit of timber here and there, uh, and we let that burn for two hours. We then cleared away the ash and the embers, and then we piled it up with dirt. So here goes, fingers crossed, let's uncover. We want to be ever so gentle that we don't disturb the, the pot underneath. So we're just going to gently move it away, find the pot, and then scrape the dirt away. We've got a broom on hand here as well. Once we get down and we expose where the clay is, we need to chisel it away a little bit and we don't want dirt to get into the, the bone source. So we're going to sweep it away, but we'll just get rid of the bulk of this dirt first. Oh, the clay's nice and hard packed around there. So as I was mentioning yesterday, we didn't have a, a very big smell of burning meat. So it was leading me to believe that the, the seal was good. And the fact that this clay has gone hard, then it uh, is leading me to think that it had a good seal. Okay, I've got my trusty little spatula here. Again, I don't want to disturb the pot too much with the big shovel, so I'll just put that aside for the moment. And we'll just chisel away at it. It's like being an archaeologist. Just want to chisel away so we don't make it any worse than it has to be. Now we had the wire in between the two pots, so we want to be mindful when we're scraping this clay away that we don't uh, jeopardise getting dirt in there around that wire. broom here. Got a reasonable enough separation there. If we had more time, we could take a bit more time. But uh, I'm just going to lift it up gently and see what we have. Whoa! That's the remnants of our bones. 
Now we weren't sure if they were the right type of bones or with meat or without meat. But there we have that. Yeah, just like the video says, smells like burnt barbecue. Then in the very bottom, it seems to be quite a bit of oil and liquid. I guess it's somewhat different to what the video was, but it's definitely uh, got a lot of oil in it. I think what we do is we try it, keep an eye on the trees, come at it just on dusk and see uh, where the possums go to and uh, just observe it and research it. So I'll just pull this out of the ground. It's definitely a lot oilier than what was in the video. But I guess that's rendered down fat. Anyway, we'll try it and see how we go. And we're back again. We've just unearthed the bone source from the pots. It looks somewhat different to what we're expecting from the video. But nonetheless, we're going to try it. It did mention in the video that you mix it with a bit of vegetable oil to, uh, to get coverage. So we're back at the peach tree where we started yesterday. So I'm just going to apply it around the tree. It's got a very disgusting smell as described in the video. Uh, so we might be on a winner there. And again, haven't actually seen it be applied before, so we're just taking a bit of a guess. Figured if we put it part way up the tree, possum's got to come in from ground level anyway to get to the tree. So uh, once he gets to here, then maybe uh, he'll think twice about climbing up any further. Definitely not as as uh, thick as the source in the video looked. But I think it's just we may have had the wrong bones, but it's just basically rendered down. Maybe if we had the fire burning longer, it would have rendered down even more. But it's all research, so we'll sit back and observe this over a period of time and uh, report back on the results. Thanks for your time. Visit Tiger Hill Permaculture, www.tigerhillpermaculture.net.